Win a Pageant, Episode 75. I created this step-by-step -step process after training thousands of women across the U.S. to win. Now you can have access to these winning strategies when you join me every Wednesday. Let's win a pageant. Hey girl, welcome to the Win a Pageant podcast. I'm your coach, Alicia Darby. You know when you're competing in a pageant and there are only like five girls competing and you're thinking like, okay, this is good, like my chances are really good. That is a very different experience from competing against you know, 12 or 50 or even 200 other contestants. Yes, there are some pageants where there are 200 contestants. I have seen them. I have even been in them. It is crazy. And getting the judge's attention among just five or even 12 contestants, that's really not as hard, to be honest. But once you get into 16, 25, 50 contestants, or, you know, you can only imagine with 200 contestants, it is more and more challenging to really stand out and get the judges to notice you. Mostly because when you have a group of that size, it's likely that so many of the women have the top five characteristics that naturally prepare them to stand out in their interview. With 50 contestants, it isn't enough to just have those top five characteristics. You actually have to have a strategy to ensure that you're going to stand out among the top 10% to get into the top five and then to win your pageant. So in this episode, I'm going to break down three very specific ways that you can get the judges to notice you no matter how many contestants there are. Now, the first area to really stand out is in your preparation. Most women will have done a little bit of walking practice and maybe they've spoken on a stage before or they've done something in the realm of performing arts. But there is a big difference between most of those women and the woman that goes above and beyond in her preparation, the one that trains in areas that most other women are not training. And you know that everyone is going to the gym, researching a bunch of questions online, practicing questions with their mom, watching some walking videos on YouTube. Really, everyone's doing that. So, okay, you do have to train in those areas too, but you need to do something that takes you beyond the basics. You've got to prepare how to communicate your biggest strengths. You've got to have a game plan for your year of service, like what are you going to actually accomplish? You've got to know how you're going to market yourself and which appearances you'll prioritize during your year. Basically, to stand out, you've got to know more and perform more. And to do that, you've got to be the most prepared. Now, the second area that I can guarantee you will stand out is in your pursuit of excellence. Most women are squeaking by with what they bring to the table. They really try to figure out what is the least amount of effort that they can put in, and then they do just that. It's really unfortunate because they figure out how little they can spend on an evening gown to barely make it, you know, or how few mock interviews they need to actually do, or what's the least amount of weight that they need to lose in order to fit in with the rest of the women. These women do not stand out. They aren't excellent, and they're not pursuing excellence. And so as a result, they just fit in with everyone else. To stand out, you have to pursue excellence in everything that you do. So don't just get some training, get the best training. Don't just wear an outfit that'll work for your interview because you've got it in your closet already. Figure out what is the best outfit that you can wear and then find it and wear that. When someone just gives half effort or just enough effort, they're not excellent. And excellence takes pursuit. No one just wins a Grammy without going to get singing lessons, okay? So to stand out among all of the others, you've got to pursue excellence in all areas. The last area that will guarantee you stand out is in that of consistency. Now, most women, they try out something, and if they don't get immediate results, then they give up. Consistency is a standout quality because so few women actually have this. And I hate to say it, but especially college-age women. Now, it's not your fault. We all have had this happen to us in college because you are programmed to just hurry up and get to the finish line of a 12- or 16-week course. And during that time, you really have to become an expert in, for example, chemistry, Okay, for just that length of time, you've got to really know everything you need to know about chemistry. But then as soon as you pass your chemistry class and you're on to the next semester, now you've got to be a math expert. And now you've got to pass that math class. You've got to dive in and you've got to know everything about math. And then at the end of that, whoop, just give up on math. Okay, 
Now, this is a real problem. I mean, of course, in college, this is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to be trying new things. You've got to master one thing. And then if it's not really the area that you're wanting to pursue, you got to move on to the next thing. I mean, I changed my major 15 times when I was in college. So talk about lacking consistency at that point. But in the real world and in the pageant world, consistency is reliability. When you prepare for your pageant, you've got to consider your communications, your wardrobe style, and the actions that you're taking that prove that you are able to stick with one thing that's going to take up a lot of your time, that's your pageant title, for an entire year, no matter how exhausted, annoyed, bored, or disenchanted you become. Showing consistency is not necessarily something that we do naturally. You've got to really think about the strategy that you're going to use to demonstrate how you're consistent in your life because you've got to communicate that to the judges in a very clear way. But when you do demonstrate consistency, you will absolutely stand out. And that, my dear, is how you win a pageant. Now, at the beginning of this episode, I mentioned the five characteristics that most women already have. These are kind of the raw ingredients of your pageant interview. So if you do have these qualities, then all you really have to do is partner them with an excellent interview strategy to seriously rock the socks off of your judges. So I put together for you a five-point checklist to know if you have what it takes to nail your pageant interview. Now, this checklist will make it very easy to see if you've got those characteristics. And if you do, then you're ready for a killer strategy. And if you don't, don't worry. These will be the skills that you're going to want to develop further. So you can get that free checklist at winapageant.com slash 75. That's the number of this episode. So when you go there, you'll just enter your name and email, and you'll get an email with a link to download the five-point checklist right away. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I will see you on the next Win a Pageant Wednesday. Hey there, I'm Alicia Darby, and I just want to say thank you so much for watching that last video. If you totally loved it and got something from it, would you just click subscribe right here to subscribe to our YouTube channel? Hey, I am here for you, and I've got so many more trainings and videos for you. In fact, this one would be a really great one to watch next. Or if that topic doesn't interest you, then try this one. It's my most recent video training. So I think both of these would be really great for you. Thank you again so much for subscribing. I am honored to be your coach. I'll see you again soon.